futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day all. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your metals market update for this Thursday, the 23rd of August, 2018, just after 3.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. These will not be the closing prices in the metals because these prices in silver and gold are actually lower than where I saw the last 12.30 prices. Copper getting a little bounce off the lows, but you do understand this market is now almost 300 points off the low. It was down six cents quite bearish news. One of the things we've been trying to point out is we didn't think that the metals were anything more than a bear market bounce, not a bottom, and so far that's looking to be the case. Let's go to the charts and see why. It's hard to get away on this weekly chart from saying anything other than the market's gone from 13.53 down to 11.61. From that low, it's had now a bounce of about $23, and that's not very much. For the week, we're up $8 still. When I give you this chart, and I had connected back here this line and here, and just ran this down, notice how the market ran into that upper resistance line and pulled back. And that's what you've got at this point. Are we trending? We are not. We're out of the downtrend, but we're not in an uptrend. The market had a short covering bounce to carry to 1208.40, taking out that high, and now you're sort of drifting. The drift also ran out of steam close to, not quite at, the 18-day average of closes, and that keeps the bias of the market down. Notice how this market has stayed since back here at the midpoint of June and just stayed under that number all the way through. You have to get over that number to give the bulls a ray of hope that the market is making a shift, and it hasn't done it yet. When I look at potential support in the market, if it continues breaking, I'll go back to the last Bollinger Band right here. And again, for those of you new to watching us, an 18-day average, as I look at it on a chart, is a line in the sand. When the market is under it, it's not unusual if you're going to get a short covering bounce that one of the numbers it might go to might be against that number to figure out what to do next. And you did it back here. You fought with that number back here, and now you're fighting again over here. Staying under a Bollinger Band, these black lines, only occurs 5% of the time. But what's important in Bollinger Bands is to look at the slope of them. This is still a bearish slope. Nothing has even begun the sideways pattern in the market. So I'll view the market as a short covering bounce and no more than that. I then look at slow stochastics for momentum. I believe price often leads momentum. Now, it can reverse. It can be price or momentum leading price. But I think that momentum, I hope I said that right, is the leader of price. And right now, you, neither are really the leader. And at this one of these times, notice how the momentum ran out. Now it's drifting and price is sort of drifting on you as well. In the GLD ETF, the popular gold ETF, you have a pattern of lower highs and you still have the lower lows. The real bearish market has been the gold miners. And this is a market that's just caught right here, still very much in an oversold condition. What is of concern to me is you lost what's called an embedded reading here, and you gained it right back. Now, let me show you this. Look at both numbers right here. And then look at the pattern that we have over here. Notice how the market was staying under the lower uh, 20 reading and just staying all the way through that. So yesterday, the market gets over it on Wednesday and the red line comes out. You'll hear me say consistently that if the market can rebed, it's the next business day and that's it. After that, the way that I created my rule for embedding is it has one day to gain it back. It gained it back on the close today, which means this was a false rally so far. Lose the reading again, and I'll change my opinion. Until that occurs, I think the bears are back in this market in full force, and they'll come out only if they lose that embedded reading or prices get down to a support level again. 
The gold-silver ratio, as I've explained, has been staying over the 18-day moving average of closes. And as it goes higher, history has shown that is not what turns the metal markets. It's the opposite. It's actually when silver gains on gold that you get more of a bull market in the metals. You're not getting that at this point, and silver shows you how ugly the situation is. This attempt at a rally was feeble, didn't go anywhere, and right back down. And you'd never had the embedded reading here to lose, so not much to go on. In the copper market, you still have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. I believe that if there were a positive announcement about China at any point in the U.S. getting together and able to accomplish something, this market would perk up. However, we're not hearing that. We're not, in fact, we're hearing nothing that I found on the news wires today about how this two-day meeting is gone, and that's putting pressure on the market. The strength in the dollar today, and I'll show you that in a minute, certainly adds to the bearishness on anything priced in dollars. As you can see, the platinum, the bounce, and now you're back into that swing. I'm going to have these lines actually pointing down. I missed that today. I should have had that. What you have here is a higher high and a lower low in the palladium in a market that's exhausted itself, I think, on the upside in terms of momentum. If the red line starts turning back down, watch out. The market should then be able to get back under the 18-day average. It went up to it, and it's just run out of everything up there. It's sort of run out of gas. In the dollar index, you still have a pattern where this break low is higher than this one by two points. And the market, it looks like it's going to settle back over the 18-day average. So until 94.83 is taken out, I think the bulls are trying to wrestle control back to the upside in the gold. But the real pattern is probably just spinning against it for a while as we're into what I'm going to call these last dog days of summer, thinner volume markets, traders gone, pay attention to all that. As you can see, you're not even going anywhere in the energies. They gave up the early morning gains and the stock market not going anywhere either. You know, one of the things we try to do with our customers is send them information. As a commodity firm that's a boutique specializing on a business where we offer a lot of information to the clients, we operate back using the technology of today, but the ideas of years ago when you talk to people. You don't hide behind, hey, just open your account, you're on your own. Our clients have access. They don't have to take it, but they have access to our research. And believe me, we spend a lot on research, getting information to traders about all these different categories. And our customers get to choose which categories they want, and it's free to them. If you'd like to see how this all works, give us a call. We'll, be, we'll put you on a temporary trial. You can go to our website. You'll see uh, the Lynn Group Research. Give that a try. Or you can click up here if you're watching me on YouTube. That'll help you out as well. I'm Ira Epstein. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a good day.